Hi, in this video, we're gonna discuss what causes crooked teeth. Recently, I watched a fantastic interview of James and Esther by Joe Rogan. In this interview, they discussed all sorts of breathing related topics, but in particular, they also talked about um, orthodontic issues of why crooked teeth happen. So why do we have crooked teeth? Not from genetics, it's because our mouths have grown so small that the teeth have nowhere to go, so they grow Whoa. crooked. And what else happens when you have a mouth that's too small for its teeth? You have a smaller airway. So this is one of the reasons why so many people have snoring, sleep apnea, and other respiratory problems. I completely agree with many of the points that James Nestor makes about orthodontic problems. In fact, to build on that, from various studies that um, I've seen, more than 90% of people um, hundreds of years ago had perfectly aligned teeth perhaps even had spacing between their teeth. Nowadays, it is uh, almost the exact opposite that I have orthodontic problems. It is so rare that I meet a child today that has perfect alignment with a perfect bite. Like in fact, uh, it almost never happens. Almost everyone I meet has either a bite problem, crowding issue, uh, you know, just you, you name it, they won't have room for their wisdom teeth. To kind of build on that point of James Nestor, um, like one of the things I learned from particularly taking like John Muse courses was he would talk about how in his studies of looking at older skulls from hundreds of years ago that the, the width of the jaw, the distance between the mo back molars on the upper palate was more than 40 some millimeters wide. And so I've been carefully measuring the intermolar widths of all my patients for the last several years. And I carefully document that of every patient I meet, um, whether they see me for general dentistry or orthodontics. And it is so rare that I meet someone who's, let's say born and raised here in Canada in a Western country, and they have a very wide arch. And what I mean by wide is let's say over 35 millimeters. It's, there's a small percentage of people who fall in that camp. Majority of people are closer to you know, in the low 30s. And um, many of the people that I'm treating for crooked teeth are usually closer to 30 millimeters. In fact, the narrowest I have seen in the last few years was 23 millimeters. That's like the width of my thumb. And that was on a six foot tall girl, actually. She was 16 years old. And, um, and her arch was exceedingly narrow. And Interestingly enough, not a mouth breather. You know, usually we associate narrow arches with, with mouth breathing, but she had the, the next problem that causes that same issue, and that is she had a severe tongue tie. So her tongue was tied down very severely. And unfortunately, her tongue couldn't rest against her palate, which caused her palate to grow very narrow. So a few of the reasons why people have crooked teeth are related to diet, softer foods, um, also foods that, you know, uh, there's been some debate on whether dairy products and other things like that can cause uh, more, promote more mouth breathing. The way we swallow, um, like for instance, our ancestors hundreds of years ago, they would go from breastfeeding to cup. There was nothing in between. Now our children today grow up uh, sucking on bottles, then sippy cups, then straws constantly just sucking on things which our ancestors did not do. And therefore the way we were swallowing is now different. A lot of people purse their lips when they swallow. And yet uh, that's something that our ancestors hundreds of years ago likely never did. And as a result, since we swallow 2000 times a day and if we swallow incorrectly, those muscles pushing on our teeth will cause our teeth and our jaws to grow differently than those who obviously don't have those habits. So, so back to the debate of environment versus genetics. More and more uh, evidence is showing that it is more environmental than genetics, but there is still a genetic component. How your body responds to the same environmental stimulus is gonna be different than maybe someone else. So genetics do play a role. Plus, you know, things like a tongue tie is more of a genetic issue, and that certainly can contribute to how, our, how we swallow and how our arch develops. So there is a, uh, you know, that is a component as well. But at the end of the day, having certain good habits, um, like 
on breathing through your nose, swallowing correctly, does kind of lay the foundation to hopefully having um, straighter teeth with a better uh, facial growth and development and a better jaw structure. Again, based on John and Mike Muse's research on um, anthropological studies and something that they've mentioned at some of the courses that I've attended uh, with them is, is the food we eat. Um, the food that we eat uh, in our modern day life is very soft. There's very few things that are you know, truly hard or crunchy. Um, relative to what our ancestors would have eaten, uh, you know, like we wouldn't even have the musculature to be able to chew some of the food that they were eating because it was so thick and strong. So that um, obviously if we have weaker facial muscles, that can also contribute to our jaws and, and uh, face growing very differently. So in terms of things that, you know, let's say a parent can do for their child who's uh, growing up to maybe have the best positive facial growth and development, having um, you know non-processed like you know like real food particularly hard crunchy foods on a regular basis uh, is important rather than cutting up that apple allow them to eat it whole uh, it's a lot more work on your jaws to do that you know rather than giving them mashed up food that they are sucking up um, make sure that they're you know they're going to have to chew it those are the things that can be done combined with you know, making sure that they're not, you know, obviously not mouth breathing, making sure, you know, try to minimize the, the type of things like sippy cups and straws so that they hopefully go to drinking as early as possible out of a glass or cup and therefore are, you know, kind of minimizing the time that they're sucking on things so that they hopefully don't develop an incorrect swallow as well. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe and like our video so that we can pass on uh, this information to even more people. Thank you very much.